This video is dedicated towards you. If you are on the fence about doing something that you know you should be doing in your gut, you just know that you should be doing it, just fucking do it. In this case, it was an unplanned trip to the south of Argentina, Patagonia, and it turned out to be fucking awesome. <laughs> Hundred frames per second, baby. You know what that means? Cliche slow mo that makes absolutely every activity look interesting, even the really boring ones, like walking. When you wake up and you've got a view like this out your window, it looks like something from Lord of the Rings. Bariloche Lake in the south of Argentina Patagonia and on the topic of this video which is doing things that you know you should be doing taking chances I was having a little thought right and the one thought that I had was about cell phone use and how much stress it causes and how much it takes you away from doing what you know you should be doing right lately I've just been extremely stressed with work and I realized it's because I was just checking my phone every two minutes so I thought you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna use my watch and just check the time every hour and then actually use the phone instead of the phone using me because oftentimes what happens is that as soon as we get bored we just check the phone right and that means it's using us we're not actually using the phone and we're addicted to it when we don't use it we become anxious and I heard the other day that apparently if you lose your phone it can cause the same amount of stress as losing a parent how crazy is that and the reason our phones cause so much damage is because I was thinking about this probably more than 40 or 50 percent of my mental bandwidth on a daily basis was just used on the phone right because I'd get working I'd get in the flow of things and then I check my phone right mental bandwidth cut be working focus check the phone mental bandwidth cut right so your mental bandwidth that can be used for something that's actually beneficial to your life can Instead of your phone, you know, if you just manage that properly, it, you'll get so much further. The second thing is that it causes so much stress as well, right? Because every time you get a message, you need to check it. Every time it goes off, it sends a little shock down your body. Um, and it just causes an uncanny amount of stress, right? So let's stop this. Um, what I've been doing, like I said before, is just checking it every hour. And it really just puts you in the moment. It gets you feeling like you're actually living, not like you're just connected to your phone waiting for the next shot of dopamine like a drug addict. And I mean, what better place to do that than over here, just enjoying the view. We've encountered a little bit of an issue. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been walking alongside a lake in Argentina, Patagonia and realized, fuck, I don't have my swimming shorts and I want to go swim. You see the dilemma. Plus the thing is I only have very feminine looking light blue underwear which have that little bird on it. Not the most masculine thing. Plus the water's a little bit cold as you can imagine being a guy. This is not something you <laughs> this is not something you want to do, right? So I need to go on a bit of a a bit of a mission. My partner in crime helping me along the way. Right, so we're going on a mission. <clears throat> but I don't know if I'm going to be able to complete the mission. First, I need to find swimming pants. Swimming trunks, as they're called. Board shorts. Cosy, costume. 
traje del baño, lo que tú quieres. So I need to find that and then I'm going to go to a hike. I don't know if I'm going to find this amazing mountain top. Not mountain top, it's called a mirador, which means uh, a place to, you know, look out basically a vantage point and then after that a waterfall. So hopefully it's not a letdown, but I don't know if I'm going to find it because I spent about an hour or two looking for the fucking travel card yesterday. I've noticed in Latin America, if you ask someone, they're not going to give you the correct directions. What you need to do is you need to ask five to ten people, get all of their answers together and then see where that answer is pointing you generally and that should normally point you in the right direction sometimes not but yesterday I was able to basically use that exact strategy eventually find the travel card so today I'm going to use the same strategy to try and find the waterfall and also the mirador which is the well first the mirador and then the waterfall so let us let us begin this this little journey of ours sparkling water if she doesn't drink sparkling water get rid of her then when you know you know <laughs> two kilos of steak for dinner. South African in me. I just can't turn down a fried animal on the fire. The little bus that they used in the movie, Into the Wild, as you can see. A little picturesque island in the background. Isn't that pretty? That route looks like a kid on cocaine drew that shit. Back and forth and back and forth, all the way from down there and up and there and there and there and there and there and there but we've just got that little bit there to go so i think we are halfway here halfway up the mountain and there are some incredible views actually that i'm going to show you but i'm going to wait till we're at the top of the mountain it's like a little bit of a cliffhanger Nothing too exciting. I'm just relaxing here, minding my own business. And I saw this put this bug up there, that little fly on the star. He's doing a little turn in the wind like that. Yep. <laughs> Listen, if that was me, I would be shitting myself. <laughs> He has one gust of wind and he is toast. I'm trying to get back to the collectivo, which means bus, and something flew into my ear and stung me, so my ear is going quite numb. I know if dread was swollen, but I was thinking I might have to go back to town if, it, if my face goes numb. But <laughs> I remembered. <laughs> this fucking mission i'm seeing this waterfall today no matter how numb my ear goes big dog. come here my boy come here my boy true fashion didn't charge my phone this morning so I've got four percent left and I've still got about half an hour to walk and then I've got to come back and find the bus but these are first small problems it's not a life or death situation there's a small part of me that's thinking oh, I need to go back now it's not worth it 
there's also a part of me that's going, there's absolutely no way you're giving up now. Habita el puma. En el caso de ver uno, no corra, which means in the case of seeing one, don't run. <laughs> seen bigger ones. That's what she said! <laughs> I think it's the journey that matters. Right, so I did say that I wanted to swim, so I found my little piece of paradise. That is just phenomenal. a story that is that shall provide some comedy relief if any of you guys know who Hunter S. Thompson was he was a complete reprobate a complete womanizer drug addict alcoholic but salt of the earth as one would say so he was neighbors with Jack Nicholson and I don't know if you've heard the story before I'm gonna read it out to you they were neighbors and they often gave each other birthday presents and on the day of, of Nicholson, Jack Nicholson's birthday, uh, Jack Nicholson returned home from LA to celebrate his birthday with his family. He met Thompson early in the afternoon and the two agreed that they would see each other later. However, since they made no definitive plans, Thompson decided to play Nicholson a surprise birthday visit late in the evening. He climbed a ridge across the road from the actor's historic Victorian home and began with his elaborate and terrifying program. He started the show by firing a 40 million, a 40 million candle power parachute flare into the air. The light that, pro that was produced by the flare was almost as intense as a mid-range nuclear blast. The area of 40 miles around Nicholson's house was bright as daylight for some 40 seconds. After that, he aimed a military-grade million-watt spotlight directly at the windows of the house and simultaneously played a tape which contained re recorded shrieks of dying pigs through a huge loudspeaker. As if the blinding lights and the ab aberrant and deafening noises weren't enough, Thompson then fired several rounds from his automatic handgun into the air. <laughs> the writer expected Nicholson to come out of the house and marvel at his incredibly strange way of saying happy birthday. However, the actor didn't come out. He and his family were scared out of their minds. At that time, when Thompson was carrying out the prank, they locked themselves in the basement and Nicholson promptly called the FBI to inform them that some raging lunatic was likely getting ready to tear down his home. <laughs> so, not much relevance to anything, but relevance to the topic of the video, which is, well, Hunter S. Thompson, seeing that he was a complete reprobate, just did whatever the fuck he wanted in life, and to some degree, that's what this video is about, and seeing that he was a completely, a complete alcoholic, cheers to him, this, the name of this gin and tonic, which is warm, and not 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 extremely uh, good, but satisfying. And how fitting actually that it's got little pictures in the mountain and we can enjoy this while looking over this beautiful view. So finally I got my fucking swim with my shorts while drinking a good GNC. I mean, it's been a good day, hasn't it? You can't really win more than that. When I was on the way to the waterfall, there was a, there was definitely an urge to not carry on and, and go, just because I was like, I can't be asked. But I think that it's important when we say we do, we're going to do something, we do it. Even though the waterfall itself was a little bit of a letdown, I think the experience is more more important than anything. So, cheers to that, Huntress Thompson who during his funeral was shot, and when I say was shot, his ashes were shot out of a 10 meter cannon into the air. Legend. <laughs> Absolute legend.
when you have one of those very very early mornings realize that I didn't sleep a second last night actually it made me go get up in the morning which is interesting because when you get up in the morning you realize that the morning sort of exists it makes it possible if that makes sense in a weird way because normally we're busy sleeping right so when we get up in the morning it's like a new world especially if you get up at five or six but I was walking outside and I went down to the lake and it was fucking cold really cold and I thought wow this is uncomfortable this is really uncomfortable and it got me thinking uh, that this discomfort is actually a, a massive benefit it's a massive benefit when we view it in terms of the disparity between what we deem as humans good or bad look at that view there that is not a shabby view is it the mountains of Patagonia but it got me thinking about the disparity whereas you can't enjoy the warm if you don't know what it's like to be cold you can't enjoy your warm bed when you haven't slept on the floor you can't truly enjoy a meal in a restaurant where before you maybe haven't had enough money to even go to that restaurant you can't enjoy money in your bank account and feeling secure when you've had zeros before and it's all about that disparity it's about the yin and the yang and that disparity creates the meaning without, without the disparity the, the good wouldn't be the, the good and the bad wouldn't be the bad it would just all be right but to be able to enjoy those those moments those moments that we deem good we have to go through the bad as well and as a man especially in today's day and age where most men are normally busy sleeping in late and updating their Instagram stories I believe there has to be a has to be a level of difficulty right because it creates strong men creates men of resilience it shows you who you are it better prepares you for the world because the world's not always a soft place and because we live in such a soft world it's good to actually create that difficulty at times right so how could we do that go for cold swims wake up early do something that maybe you didn't feel like doing and it gives you a greater appreciation for life as well it creates men of higher levels of integrity which is essentially what life is about being the best human that you can be on the journey to be the best human you can be and it's impossible to achieve that without difficulty so we have these interesting thoughts in the morning put yourself through difficulty and don't label the bad as bad because the bad is good because without the bad there is no good good doesn't exist there's a quote from Fight Club where he says we have no great war no great depression we have no great war no great depression our great war is a spiritual war and our great depression is our lives our great war is a spiritual war our great depression is our lives and that's so true man Men nowadays don't have purpose. Before we were getting into a ship, sailing into oftentimes certain death, we had animals to kill, we had farms to, to grow, farms to service, and families to look after, and life was, t life was tough. So even though life was not ideal, I believe men back then were more happy because they had more purpose and I believe that that's what's lacking nowadays so 
we have to give ourselves purpose, right? And I believe that's why so many men are offing themselves. Because there is that lack of purpose, that lack of direction, which, of, which inevitably ends up with a lack of fulfillment. Which is random, but it's relevant because there are lots of them in South Africa, so it makes me think of home. So we got to this place, and apparently this is an amazing view, which I really want to see, apart from the one that I went to two days ago. This one's going to be ten times easier because you just get hop in a ski lift. So we've just arrived here. Boom! Oh, fuck, there's a queue. God damn it. People waiting. This is fine, I think it passes quite quickly. And that's why I use protection. <laughs> but let me tell you, if you take a tumble, it's not going to be fun whatsoever. I'm not so sure about this infrastructure over here. On the way here, there were loads of uh, beaches. It's incredible little beaches next to the lake and I thought wow that would be so cool to visit all of those um, but I've only got two days here so oh it stopped all right we're going again I don't want to be stuck up here if you get stuck up here and you need to take a number two and there are people watching you 10 meters away like this old bloody uncle yeah how's it <laughs> yeah, I'd be laughing, brother. <laughs> it made me think. Um, obviously, it's applicable to life, right? But you've always got so many choices in life, and it's all, essentially the, the older you get, the the more important your decisions are wherever your life is, or wherever you at what stage in your life you are at. And I always thought, how do you make these decisions? What, what principle? Or what lens do you use to make these decisions? And I was listening to a podcast by Chris Williamson, I think his name is. I can't remember what it's called. I can't remember what the podcast is called, but he was talking about a conversation he had with Christopher uh, Hitchens. I think his name is I'm probably butchering names. Um, one name at a time. But he said you don't, you, you choose the you choose your future regrets. And I thought that was interesting because. Oftentimes we filter the decisions that we make through the lens of choosing what we want to do, so our future goals in a sense, what we want to achieve. Instead, he says, don't do that, you need to choose your regrets. So you change that around, you change the framing of that around. And essentially what that means is that you think about the different decisions that you have to make and what the, what the consequences or what the outcomes of those decisions are, and then you decide which one of those you are able to live with and which ones you are not able to live with because in life you know on a mic on a micro level just driving here and seeing all these amazing beaches and places to see i thought oh, i want to see all of these but you can't and on a macro level that could mean anything right the person that you decide to uh, date it could mean the job that you decide to take it could mean the place you decide to live and there is no right or wrong when it comes to decision making and that's what make that's what makes decision making hard but if you filter it through the lens of what is the outcome of this going to be and am i willing to live with this regret and am i not willing to live with this regret and if you're willing to live with that regret and not willing to live with the regret of the other decision your answer is made um, another uh, piece of wisdom from a guy called Dan Dupani, not Dan Dupani, there's a guy who wrote a book called The Almanac of Naval Ravikant, um, very cool book and he says it's either, if you have to think about it, it means no, which I quite like as well because basically it's a filtering mechanism for either fuck yes or fuck no, which is what a lot of our lives should be. I believe that we 
we bullshit a lot of the decisions that we make like oh this would sort of be, be cool and i'll do this and i'll do that but it's actually we need to cut away all the bullshit that's that's creating uh, indecision in those moments and just go is this a fuck yes or is this a fuck no because essentially if you spend too much time putting effort into the decisions that are not a fuck yes and not a fuck no it's you're doing things that you sort of want to do but not really and it's taking away the energy and the focus and the mental bandwidth that could be dedicated towards just an absolute fuck yes decision which is not only gonna help you get further in life whether that's a business decision or whatever because you're gonna be more invested but it's also uh, just gonna give you a lot more fulfillment as well so I don't know why that came to mind while I was watching or while I was on this aerosia which means just a ski lift um, looking at overweight tourists come down the you know down the lift yes so sweaty like let me tell you who ate all the pies I should have gotten into the cookie cabinets I would not be happy if the lift was stressing itself like it was but look at that fucking view wow I didn't even look behind I was too focused on the camera trying to compose a thought that is Back in my bag, yo. Conscious. Iso. Down. Back in my bag, and I gotta brag. I do this shit for real. When we was down and we had nothing, we had to share a meal. We put the shit in overdrive with no steering wheel. Shorty throw that thing back in a pair of hills. Yeah, she be riding on that thing like a Ferris wheel. Yeah, I love them dark skin, brown skin, caramel. You know, I had to bring it to the hood like she carrying silver wind. As you can see, the bus stop is over there. Buses are for fucking losers. Loser cruisers. So, it's better. It's more healthy to walk, you know? No, it's a lie. I would take the bus, but apparently it only comes in every 20 minutes, half an hour. So, easier just to walk. She keep on turning her head, cause when she walked that thing, jiggle, jiggle. And we going back to back on them like we here, we here. It's so important to enjoy every single day that we have in this planet because we never know when our last day is going to come. We literally don't know. I remember I was walking in Mexico City, probably about a year ago now, and I was crossing the street and obviously my mind being used to the way cars drive or the side of the road that cars drive in South Africa and the UK, they drive on the other side. So I was looking the wrong way and I was about to step into the road and a car passed me by, missing me by about half a meter. Now, if I had taken a step half a second before, half a second before, I would have been mincemeat. I would have been toast. And it just makes you think. So often we take life too seriously and we don't realize our own mortality. We don't realize our own mortality in this respect. And it all comes down to standards, what we give ourselves permission and how we give ourselves permission to feel, right? So if you're a kid in Africa, in a civil war, who's just had his fucking hands cut off, right? That's not a good situation to be in. But then you've got Robert in London who got paid $80,000 80,000 pounds instead of a hundred thousand pounds because he didn't get his bonus and that gives him permission to be sad All right, so it's all about Different standards and, and what we give ourselves permission to feel right so for example the kid in Africa Now let's go a little bit further if you're a kid with one hand, but you're still begging in London You would be over the moon you would actually be happy if you got to experience the reality that you knew that you were avoiding being the kid in Africa without two hands and in a country that's got zero prospects for him. And it's all about levels, right? We can't control the external environment, but what we can control 
are the standards we give ourselves to be happy. Just being grateful. I know this is a bit of a, a little bit of a hippie, wigged out hippie routine. Just be happy for everything you have. But it's so true, right? So often we think we're going to live forever and we're not. We're going to fucking die. And because we think we're living forever and we don't think we, do, we take things for granted, what happens is that years pass, decades pass, and then we realize, oh fuck, I've literally just pissed away the last however many years without truly being present in the moments and enjoying the small things in life. And oftentimes, ironically, it's the really difficult things in the moment that make us happy long term. But in the moment, it actually impacts us negatively. Right, isn't that funny? Just a little thought that I had. I thought I would use, I would squeeze all the all the motivation and energy that I had surrounding that topic because it came to me. So I thought I would share that with you. It's something that I have to keep on reminding myself. Because so often, maybe you get a shit text from a friend, maybe something bad happens at work and it, it knocks us down. We allow that to impact our emotions. And it's not that bad, right? And the only thing that we have in life is our, are our emotions, right? We don't have anything. We've got other things, right? But the most important thing in life is our internal state. And that often dictates how we view life. So just being aware of that makes, makes a big difference. Now, where's my fucking bus? I've been waiting for five minutes. <laughs> Bag and I gotta brag, I do this shit for real When we was down and we had nothing, we had to share a meal We put the shit in overdrive with no steering wheel Back for another day Yesterday we couldn't go diving, but today Apparently we can Booyah! We the top tier, UGK the major, we not play it, it don't stop here. Yeah. Traffic lights, we going, know the time until the clock, no man. Time. Let's on roll, we doing digi to the whole block, clear, yo. What that actually looks like is the guy in the kayaks smacking the dive in the nuts with the oar. But anyways. de verdad Ay, bien, bien. Bien. Muchísimo aire ¿Cómo se lo vamos a pedir? Como le decía anteriormente con el regulador Es mordiendo y sellando bien con los labios El hecho de morder no hace que se active el aire ni nada That was a crazy trip. Next time you're contemplating doing something and your gut is telling you, just fucking do it. Just do it because the experiences that you can have from that far outweigh the downsides. It's, wow, what a, what a trip that was. What a journey. If you like the video, subscribe, leave a comment. Do whatever you want to do. Do what your heart desires. Do whatever your heart desires. I won't hold it against you. I fucking promise you. But I'll see you in the next one. Peace.